Hello and welcome to the Pre-Calculus 11 lesson on graphing absolute value functions. Um, first, let's just refresh ourselves on what an absolute value is. Um, hopefully everyone remembers that absolute value is the, gives us the magnitude of the number. Another way to think about it is the distance from zero on the number line. Essentially the way they work is it's like a set of brackets, but the output will always be positive. So the absolute value of four, four is four from zero on the number line, so the absolute value of four is just four. Next one, the absolute value of three minus five would be the absolute value of negative two. Notice they work the same as brackets, and the answer always has to come out positive for the output's always positive, so absolute value of negative two is two. Let's fire this guy up here to give us a bit of space to work. We'll do this inside brackets first, so that's 3 times negative 4 plus 2, and that'll give us 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, so negative 10, absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Notice as far as order of operations goes, they work the exact same as brackets. So this guy will give us 3 minus 4 is negative 1, negative 6 plus 8 is 2, so that gives us 1 plus 2 equals 3. Alright, now let's have a look at the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. If x equals negative 3, so we'd have to put in a negative 3 for x, that means we'd have to put in a 3 for y to make that equation true. And you can see that basically the negative sign is just going to disappear on those. Um, notice I'm using red. I'll be using red for all of the absolute value graphs in this entire unit. Okay, so let's just plot our points here. So we've got negative 3, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So there it is. y equals the absolute value of x. And that's all of the solutions to y equals the absolute value of x plotted on a graph. Question 3 asks us, how is the graph for y equals the absolute value of x the same as the graph for y equals x? Okay, well, let's put the graph of y equals x on the graph in black. So solutions to y equals x are going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and so on. So there's our graph of y equals x. Okay, how is it the same? Well, if y is greater than or equal to zero, then they're exactly the same. So notice that if y is greater than or equal to zero, they're exactly the same. So in this case, that'll be when x, so if y is greater than or equal to zero, they're the same. And in this case, that happens when y is greater than, oops. That happens when x is greater than or equal to zero. So notice that yellow highlighted part, x and y, are both greater than or equal to zero. Question four asks us how they're different. Notice that because all of the negative y's get turned into positives, it basically gets mirrored up. So any parts where y is less than zero will get mirrored up to a positive y. Okay, let's have a look at the first question from the textbook. They want us to sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 6. And let's follow this hint here and first graph y equals just normal 2x minus 6. So for y equals 2x minus 6, we're going to have a y-intercept of negative 6 and a slope of 2. So 
So there's our graph of y equals 2x minus 6. And hopefully everyone remembers from the last page where y is positive so or equal to 0 it's going to be exactly the same. So when y is equal to 0 or positive y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 6 will be exactly the same as our original graph without the absolute value. Where it's negative we're just going to get mirrored up. So here we've got the point 2 negative 2 will get mirrored up to the point 2 2. Here we have the point 1 negative 4 gets mirrored up to 1 4. There we go. There's our graph of y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 6. And now they've also asked us for the intercepts, domain, and range. And this is all for the absolute value graph, so I'm going to stay in red. So our y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, is going to be right here. That's 6. X-intercept. Our graph is going to touch the x-axis at x equals 3. And now our domain and range. So our domain, we can put any x we want into this equation. It's never going to be a problem. So x just has to be a real number. And then our range, our y's start at 0 and go up. So our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0 for the red graph. Okay, next textbook question. Um, basically exactly the same. It's just our original graph is going to be a parabola instead of a straight line. So let's start by graphing our original. Start with a table of values. Notice I'm using black because it's not the absolute value graph. And we should see right away that when x equals negative 1, we get 0 squared, so that will be the vertex. And when x equals negative 1, y will have to equal negative 2 to make that equation true. Let's count in both directions from that and find some points. All right, there's our table of values. Let's throw this on the graph. There we go. And there's our graph of y equals 2 x plus 1 squared minus 2. All right, first thing we can do is look for where y is positive, And that's where our absolute value graph will be exactly the same. So 0 and positive is there. 0 and positive is there. And then where y is negative, it's just going to get mirrored up. So here we have negative 1, negative 2. We'll get mirrored up to negative 1, 2. And then that's going to be the exact same shape. So there's our graph of y equals the absolute value of 2x plus 1 squared minus 2. And now they want domain range and our intercepts. So first our y-intercept. is right here at 0, 0. X-intercepts. We're going to have negative 2 and 0. Domain. X can be anything. X is real. And range. Our Y's are 0 and up. So our range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Now one last example from the textbook. We'll start by graphing y equals negative x squared minus 3. So that's going to give us table of values. There's our table of values. Plot those points on the graph. negative x squared minus 3. 
3. All right, now let's get our absolute value function. So where is it the same? Where is it going to be the same where our black graph is above the x-axis? Well, nowhere. None of these are positive, so we're going to have to flip everything up. So our, our vertex, 0, negative 3 is going to get flipped up to 0, 3. 1, negative 4, flipped up to 1, 4. And same for the other points. There we go. So there's our graph of y equals the absolute value of negative x squared minus 3. Okay, and notice that this is actually the graph of y equals x squared plus 3. And I'm going to leave you to think about why that is. Okay, let's have a look at our intercepts. Y-intercept is 3. X-intercepts, we don't have any. Domain, we can still put anything we want in for x, so x is real. And range, our y's are going to go from 3 and up. So our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 3. So just a quick summary that will work on all these. First thing, do your graph without absolute values. And then just take any negative y's and reflect them up to turn them into positive y's. So those will obviously be reflected over the y, or sorry, the x-axis.